Let me read to you a passage from the fifth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 1 to 12. It's the gospel that could be used for the celebration of a national day, such as, well, Australia Day on January the 26th. St. Matthew writes, Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. That's from Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 to 12. What does it suggest to us? Well, it suggests thoughts about any celebration of a day of the nation. What do I mean? Well, on this day, January the 26th, in Australia there is celebrated its national day a day on which the whole nation celebrates the blessing that is one's own country and nation. You know, all things have their or origin, of course, in God. He sustains all things in existence, which is to say that all things are the continual gift of God, our common Father. The air we breathe, the natural resources we use, the material and cultural benefits we enjoy, inasmuch as they exist at all, are the constant gift of God the Creator. So while a secular nation may celebrate a national day without formal and public reference to God, its religious citizens will see it as the most natural thing in the world to acknowledge God as being at the center of any such celebration. And the Church will manifest and will lead the religious celebration of a national day. What then is to be said of a national day, whatever the country might be? Well, at least this must be said, that at the forefront is the thought of development. That is to say, a country looks back on its history from the perspective of the present and thinks of the development that has taken place from its beginnings. By whatever process, just or unjust, the country passed into the hands of its present citizens at some point and its development began. The land was worked, laws were promulgated, businesses established, schools begun. The population grew and the nation gathered its momentum. There were bright spots in the development and there were many very dark spots that did not amount to development at all. At the heart of this process was the moral life of the nation, and in this, successes will be seen as well as serious failures. Now, in the modern era, a strong tendency will be to look on development, including moral development, as earthbound. That is to say, the nation will tend to be seen by its citizens as having purely earthly, temporal and empirical goals. The country will be understood to have developed highly if it attains a high degree of economic, political, social and, say, environmental development. Its perspective will be secular and its notion of moral development will likewise be secular, which in general will be utilitarian and happiness oriented. That is to say, the notion of development will, be, will not be, in general, an integral one, involving the whole man and every man. Fundamentally, the temptation will be to look on past, present and future development, 
of oneself and one's country in a way that eclipses its fundamental component, which is God. God is the central element of true development because man's fundamental vocation is to communion with God. All his other responsibilities have God and his will as their reference point. The most fundamental development for every man and woman is the development of love for God and in God love for one's fellow man. If this is the case for the individual and the individual's family it is also the case for a nation. But so deeply entrenched is the assumption that God is just a private opinion that any public acknowledgement of God is almost instinctively assumed to be in poor taste then and of course here I am especially referring or speaking of a country such as Australia which is especially secular in its public and civic life. Its foundations as a notion which is National Day, Australia Day celebrates were profoundly secular even though there were strong religious elements present. It began, the country began as a barracks and as a jail. Wave after wave of convicts, <coughs> convicts were unloaded to its shores and to take but one example of the lack of religion it was decades before the Catholic Church was allowed to have a formal, enduring, visible and official presence serving its adherents. Despite powerful religious currents coursing through its life it became a secular nation in a public sense. The constant danger remains that development of both the individual and the nation will be seen as a temporal, earthly and empirical matter. For this reason, our Gospel today that I read earlier reminds us of the central importance of God and life in God. The true blessings are those which our Lord sets forth in the Beatitudes and according as the individual, the family and the nation approaches life according to the Beatitudes, so will the true blessings of life be gained. There is this to be said also. The secular assumption that keeps God out of view is a very active assumption. It actively keeps God out of view and particularly it actively keeps Christ out of view. It will not tolerate the proposition that Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords with all authority in heaven and on earth. The national day of any country is the opportunity for the Christian and for all the church's children to raise the question of what true development is. It is not just the development of those blessings that relate simply to this life. It must be an integral development of the whole man and for every man. And what is it that ensures this development? Above all, the person of Jesus Christ brings this integral development. We must enter into communion with him and accept his revealed truth and guide our lives in accord with it. That will bring integral development, the development God wishes every person and every nation to seek. Now this is the path to grandeur, true grandeur.